A couple of nights ago, I saw the weirdest thing. It was about 1 in the morning and I wasn't sleepy at all. It couldn't have been a dream because I was nowhere near tired. Hoping to wind down, I went to the family room and turned on the TV. We have a DVR box through Verizon and everyone in the family picks a few shows they like to record. Of course, with two and a half bronies in the house, Friendship as Magic was set to record every episode and kept up to seven. I scrolled through to see the ones we had recorded and picked the one on the very bottom. Unwatched. Dragon Shy. Dragon Shy is one of my favorites. The teaser, however, was not Dragon Shy. Not even close. I'm used to the TV guide saying one episode is airing, but it was actually switched out at the last minute. But this was something else. It wasn't any episode I recognized, and you believe me when I say I watched them all. It wasn't too surreal, though. It was Twilight Sparkle pacing around her bedroom, listing all the things she had to do that day. Return a book, visit Fluttershy, yada yada. Then she said, Spike, are you getting this? And it showed Spike's bed. But instead of him, it was a cute little Spike-looking ragdoll, with button eyes and a polka dot patch in the seat. It looked absolutely adorable. Twilight laughs, and we go on to the opening. To further confuse matters, the opening music was an enhanced Season 2 song, but there was no train or anything. It had the video of the Season 1 opening, so much for placing it in the timeline. Unless this was a leaked Season 3 episode, and they were done pushing the train toys by that point. After the opening, there were commercials. I fast forwarded through them, but from the looks of it, they were all normal commercials. Then the show came back to show Twilight and Sugar Cube Corner, the Spike doll on her back. The title was Half-Baked Sun Cakes. Twilight was paced back and forth giving some plot exposition about how they were making special cupcakes for Princess Celestia to thank her for letting Twilight stay in Ponyville with all of her friends. Pinky was supposed to be making them, then Twilight would use her unicorn magic to make some sunshine and put them in the cupcakes, making them sun cakes. Twilight was all alone, but she was talking like she was talking to her friends. Then she started reacting to something that wasn't happening. From what I could gather, Twilight suddenly realized the cupcakes were missing. She began to look around and asking questions, and it was then I realized that she was talking directly to her friends who weren't there. She was responding like they were talking to her too. It made it hard to follow, and I can't remember of much of what she said. But it would be like this, for example. Twilight says, Fluttershy, where have you been all day? And normally Fluttershy would say something like, Oh, I've been tending to my animals all day. Then Twilight would say, Oh well, give Angel my best then. Except here she would say, Fluttershy, where have you been all day? Then, throw, then pause for three beats. And not time to register a significant pause, but actually not long enough for another pony to say anything meaningful. And then she would say, oh well, give Angel my best then. Twilight moved and acted like there was other ponies on screen, and in fact, the camera was positioned so that other ponies should have been in the frame, but it was just Twilight. Anyway, I think Pinkie Pie started panicking because Twilight kept telling her to calm down, and then they would find the cupcakes. Then she pulled a magnifying glass out of hammer space and began looking for clues. The rest of the first act was on her looking for clues, asking the Spike doll to write them down, and questioning other ponies. It would have been an ordinary show except that Twilight seemed to be the only pony in all of Ponyville, because there was no one there to question. She began to get flustered, but the cute kind of flustered like in the end of Look Before You Sleep, not the creepy flustered from Lesson Zero. There were plenty of jokes and cute moments, but I was too busy trying to figure out what I was missing besides every other pony in existence, to retain any specifics. Finally, it was time to go to Canterlot. Even though the cakes were still missing, Twilight looked nervous. She was afraid of what Celestia would say if Twilight arrived empty-handed after promising a surprise. After the commercial, she was already in Canterlot, and Canterlot was abandoned too. She walked up to the castle and around the palace grounds, stomping to introduce her friends to old guards and palace workers she used to know. Again, Twilight was the only pony. Then she would go to the throne room. Her ears dropped, her tail hung. I went, aww. 
and she went inside. She apologized for not bringing the cupcakes. She promised she tried her hardest to find them after they disappeared, and she was sorry she let Celestia down. I don't know what invisible Celestia was saying to Twilight, but whatever it was, she slowly started to lift her head up. Her eyes brightened and her tail stopped hanging. She looked happy. Then the music changed, like they were starting a musical number. Hot dog! A sneak preview of the new episode and a musical number! It sounded incredibly familiar, and after the first few bars played, I realized it was. No kidding. Schubert's Ave Maria. Only you know, if it's arranged by Daniel Ingram. Twilight was singing, and I swear it was Tara Strong's voice, not Rebecca Schroit. The whole song was accompanied by some of the most beautiful imagery I've ever animated in Flash. It panned over valleys colored with wildflowers, up mountains blowing with the wind, and a cave belching smoke, down to the ocean waves that, when they broke on the shore, made a faint rainbow appear. The words were completely different, and all I can remember was I, what I jolted down. Ave Maria. Birther of the Sun. Question mark. Question mark. The beauty of all our nights and sunless days. Question mark. Question mark. A Maria, Heaven's Bride. When it was over, we faded back to Twilight at Sugar Cube Corner. She was laughing, and I gathered that she had just found the cupcakes. She explained Mrs. Cake had taken them out of the oven and turned it off, and Mr. Cake flustered with all the work, and their new twins thought they needed to go in, but they had been sitting in the oven this whole time. Twilight laughed, saying it was a good thing the oven wasn't hot. It looked like gas range, and she flickered the switch on the stove and didn't light, but she acted like it did. Then came the letter, Dear Princess Celestia, something something, good friends help you, because when more people help you, everyone's share of the work adds up to less than it would have been done. And a good friend understands when things don't always go the way you expected. And this struck me as sweet that she was calling Princess Celestia a friend. Did you get all of that spike? She asked the spike doll. It sort of flopped off her back and she laughed. Then, the creepiest goddamn thing happened. She stopped, and her face had this look of complete heartbreak. It was like when Pinkie Pie thought her friends didn't want to come to her party. It was like your face the first time you finished My Little Dashy. She sat down, a look of despair and ultimate sadness in her eyes, now watering. Sad stock music played in the background, the camera pulled back, showing her sitting in an empty sugar cube corner then fades to outside, still pulling back to show all the empty Ponyville into the clouds. Then, My Little Pony, the credits started, and startled the crap out of me. There was an ad for Pound Puppies, some commercial, the first minute of family game night, then the recording was over. I was so confused and weirded out that I didn't even want to think about it. I just flipped channels until I found Will and Grace or something. Something that I knew was behaving like it was supposed to. And watched that channel until I fell asleep on the couch. The next morning when I woke up, I went to the DVR and tried to watch the episode again. Only to realize with a sinking stone that I forgot to mark it, save until I delete. And this morning's show of the cutie pox had pushed it off the DVR. It's gone. Well, no worries, right? The Brony community is notorious for catching every single episode and going over them all with a fine-tooth comb. I was sure since the episode aired, plenty of people uploaded it to YouTube. Disgusted and... nausea. And have come to a conclusion that makes a lot more sense than what I thought I saw. But I found nothing. A Google search for the episode title turns up nothing relevant. No one's marked it on Wikipedia as being an unconfirmed title of an upcoming episode no mention of it on Equestria Daily, no screen caps of My Little Brony, no spin-off, no over-analysis fanfic on fanfiction.net, no conversation about every little detail on any forum ever. It's like no one else saw that episode. All I have are the A. Maria notes. Someone has to know what I'm talking about, though. Has anybody seen this episode? Somebody has to have seen the episode. Does it sound familiar to anyone? Seriously, I'm getting weirded out over here. 
<sighs> Why was Twilight the last pony in Equestria?